Let's say I run a factory here in my country, Uganda, and this factory produces products that are distributed to the market here locally. And uh, this product, the factory has grown to a point where we need some trucks to transport these commodities up country to our respective dealers. So what happens is that I need to import a truck. Uganda being a landlocked country, we normally import these vehicles from abroad to come here. So the process of importing means that I'm going to go and reach out to a factory or a manufacturer in Japan, maybe, and they are going to get that truck shipped in here. So, well, uh, the process will be that I'll go ahead and pay the cost of the truck at the manufacturer. After paying the cost of the truck at the manufacturer, then that truck is going to be um, put onto, shipped, maybe put on the sea. So the truck will be transported by sea to here. So while it's on sea, I'm supposed to pay for the insurance of that truck while it's in transit on sea. Then I'm also supposed to pay for for the transport costs, they call it freight costs uh, as it's moving. Then it will come and arrive at the port in Mombasa. So it is offloaded off Mombasa. Then I'm supposed to get a driver whose salary I am supposed to pay because this driver is supposed to drive that truck to, for it to reach inward inland into where the factory is in Uganda. Then I'm also supposed to pay for the fuel that truck is going to use to transport to move from Mombasa to come up to uh, you know Uganda Kampala then also I'm supposed to pay for the taxes that are associated with getting that 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 truck here so when the truck eventually comes and it is here in Uganda then I'm going to subject it to some mechanical inspection so I'm going to get a mechanic to come and inspect the truck to make sure that it is in good working condition. Then after the oil is, is done, then the truck will start operating. So when the truck starts operating, then um, I'm supposed to make sure that I am buying its fuel so that it's able to move up and about. The driver that will be driving that truck around distributing these products from my factory to, to our dealers across the country, I'm supposed to pay that driver's salary. Um, then I'm supposed to also pay for its repairs, periodic repairs and maintenance costs. And you know these things keep sometimes they break down and they need to be repaired. So all those costs that I have talked about, from the cost, there are costs that were incurred in getting this truck to be in my factory so that it starts working, and then there are costs that have been incurred in making sure that this truck continues operating. Now, between these costs, there are two categories. There is some of these costs are what you will categorize as capital expenditure, and some of these other costs are what you will categorize as revenue expenditure. So the question is, how do you distinguish which of these costs is capital in nature and which of these costs is revenue? in nature. What's the difference between capital expenditure and revenue expenditure? That's the whole purpose of this video. Capital expenditure are the costs incurred in generating or supporting a non-current asset. Or you can just simply say that capital expenditure involves buying of fixed assets. For example, the truck that I just bought is a fixed asset because it's being used in the factory and also these are the costs that are incurred in adding value to an existing asset that is capital expenditure whereas revenue expenditure revenue expenditure are simply expenditures that are used or that are incurred to help you generate revenue so now let's quickly go through uh, these costs that I have been talking about which of these costs is capital expenditure which of them is revenue expenditure when you spend anything on a fixed asset when you're trying to get a fixed asset into its working condition that is capital expenditure then the costs that you incur in ensuring that that fixed asset continues operating smoothly those are revenue expenditures or 
the expenditures that you're going to incur in helping you generate revenue those are revenue expenditures and revenue expenditures are normally small and they are routine in nature so let's look into the uh, costs that i have been talking about earlier in my illustration when i was trying to bring that truck into my business i talked about the costs definitely that is a capital expenditure the cost of getting that car when i paid you know the money to buy it the insurance when i was getting that truck onto uh, the, uh, the the onto the ship so that it comes to uganda that's that is that, that insurance cost on sea is uh, a capital expenditure now that insurance cost is different from the insurance that i will pay when this truck is here operating get the difference the insurance premiums the comprehensive insurance premiums that i'll pay for 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 that truck when it is operating in my business will be considered a revenue expenditure however the insurance cost that i pay in getting that truck to be safe on sea as that truck is coming into my business that is considered a capital expenditure let's take a difference so freight you know the cost of freight when the thing was on sea that is a capital expenditure because it was a costing card in getting that fixed asset into my business the transport when the truck reached on on, on or at the port in mombasa it was supposed to be transported to my factory inland that is in uganda being a landlocked country that was a cost incurred in getting that truck into my premises it is still capital expenditure that cost is tagged to the cost of the truck however uh the, the, i mean those costs they, it, it, they involved the fuel for the truck to get inland however that cost is different from the cost that i will incur if i am to buy fuel for the truck to do its normal operations because the truck is coming to distribute goods across the country so the fuel that i will be buying to enable the truck to distribute the, the goods across the country that cost of fuel is revenue expenditure because that is an expenditure that is helping me to generate cash to generate money it's different from the fuel that i will buy for that truck to be transported from the port to my business for the first time if it's fuel to transport it from the port to my business for the first time then that is capital expenditure the salary of the driver same story the driver the, 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 the salary or the wage that i will pay the driver when he is transporting that truck from the port to come to my factory for the first time that is a capital expenditure that cost will be tagged to the overall cost of the truck that wage is different from the wages or the salaries that i will pay be paying the driver to drive the truck around to distribute products in the normal day-to-day -day running of the business the normal day-to-day running of the business that kind of salary will be categorized as salaries you know it will be categorized as a revenue expenditure it is an expenditure that i'm incurring to uh, for, for so that the dry, uh, for, so that my business gets money so it's a revenue expenditure however the the the, the wage that i will pay to get the truck into my premises for the first time that cost will be tagged to the cost that was incurred in getting that fixed asset into my business then there is the mechanic who checked the car when the thing had just arrived for the first time and we are checking for it for any issues you know we are checking the truck it has just been imported we are checking for any issues we are doing a uh, due diligence to see if it's in under good mechanical condition so the costs incurred in that motor that inspection for the very first time that is also tagged to the cost or i mean what it took to get that car into my business however when the truck starts operating the costs incurred in the usual maintenance the periodic maintenance those are not capital costs they are not capital expenditure those are now revenue expenditures because those are expenditures that are being used to you know help me generate revenue to enable the 
fixed asset to operate smoothly so that it's able to make me money. So then uh, also the taxes that I talked about, especially taxes that cannot be claimed, those are also tagged to the cost of the overall truck. And I think you're now getting the picture. In a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to capital costs, capital costs are incurred in acquiring a fixed asset for the first time and any incidental expenses or costs that are necessary to get the fixed asset to work for the very first time. That is, why, that is how the, the standard as describes capital expenditure or capital costs. So it means this, like I have been describing, that is the reasoning behind. However, when it comes to revenue expenditure, revenue expenditure is more about the costs that are used up in the process of making business. And in this case, this is what we call the expenses. So if I'm to look at it from an overall perspective, things like salaries and wages, things like rent, things like, you know, costs that are incurred to help you generate revenue in the normal day-to-day -day running of your business. That is what we call revenue expenditure. Also, you need to take note that all costs that significantly improve the life of uh, the fixed asset are also going to be capitalized. For example, if this is uh, this truck, maybe you, we all know that a truck works uh, on the engine. You know, the engine is very paramount when it comes to the operation of the truck. So now let's say for some reason we decide to overhaul the engine. Overhauling means that, you know, you're going to significantly look into the engine parts, remove all worn out parts, replace it with new parts and significantly change it to a, a more to, to, to a new position where its life is ex significantly extended. The costs incurred there are definitely going to be capital. They are going to be tagged to the cost, you know, to the cost of the to, of the truck, because those are things that do not happen routinely, and they are going to increase, you know, the life of the car significantly. Another example may be you're having a block or an, a building and then you decide to convert it into an office block. If you're going to convert it into an office block, there's going to be a significant amount of money spent in redesigning the, of the, the block so that it turns into offices or into cubicles. So such, um, such expenditures are capital. So what I'm trying to say is uh, on top of you know the costs that are incurred in getting a fixed asset to your premises for the very first time, capital expenditure also refers to all costs that extend the life or benefit of an asset significantly. So what is the double entry here when we buy a fixed asset? Of course, when we are buying a fixed asset for cash, we are going to debit the asset and then we are going to credit cash or bank. And if you've bought it on credit, you're going to debit the asset and credit uh, payables. So the, 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 the figure that you're debiting, the, that figure, the figure of the, co the cost of the asset is what we are talking about as capital expenditure. So in the illustration that I gave, uh, the figure you'll be using as your, the one that you'll be debiting on the asset side, that figure is a derivation of how much you spent on getting the car. All costs that you incurred in getting the fixed asset from wherever you've got it from to, to for, so that it comes to its working condition. All those costs that I've been talking about, um, the mechanic you paid to look at the car for the very first time, the fuel that you pay to get the car into your business for the first time, the insurance you pay, all those are summed up, they are added up, and they are tagged as the cost of the asset. And that is what you debit. Then, of course, when it comes to the revenue expenditures, revenue expenditures, those ones are treated as expenses in the uh, in, in, in the profit and loss account, or call it the income statement, or call it the statement of comprehensive income. And just maybe just to speak one more thing, uh, when we're talking about capital rev, capital expenditure, capital expenditure has nothing to do with uh, your capital account or call it your equity account. Because let's, let, let's look at it this way. Uh, you remember the business entity concept that I uh, explained earlier? I am the owner, that's the business. 
I get my money, I give it to the business. So that is capital. I have given capital to the business. So when I give capital to the business, now it is the business to use the capital the way it wants. How does the uh, accounting equation play out when I give capital to the business? Of course, we know that um, capital plus liabilities is equal to assets, right? So when I give capital to the business, we have more capital in the business. Let's say I've given 100 million. So 100 million is capital to the business. And then also cash in the business has increased. Maybe that yeah, cash has increased in the business. So that is how the accounting equation stands. Then what happens? The business needs to procure a truck to help in its operations. So what happens is that the cash that is already in the business is going to reduce. Let's say the truck costs 50 million. So 50 million is going to be used to buy the truck. So what happens here is now we have a new asset in the business. The asset is uh, 50 is a truck, we'll call it a motor vehicle, for 50 million. So we have an increase in the asset of 50 million and then the cash in the business is going to reduce by 50 million. And still, you're going to end up with your um, equation, you know, balancing out, your, your um, accounting equation balancing out. Assets is equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. So this simple illustration is simply showing you that um, capital expenditure, uh, the, the double entry around it has nothing to do with the capital account. Well, both of them, they, this is capital expenditure, and this is capital equity, but th it has nothing to do with the equity. The equity will stay intact. It is the cash that you've given in the business that is being played around to buy fixed assets left, right, and center. With those few words, I hope I have painted a good picture regarding the difference between revenue expenditure and capital expenditure. My name is Arnold Rangakuramia from kisembuacademy.com. Take care.